good. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> I hate doing intros. I hate doing intros. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope y'all are well. Today, we're gonna be learning how to play the guitar parts on Spite, a song I just released like eight months ago. So maybe y'all are still interested in learning how to play it, and maybe this will just be a vibe. But if you want it, here it is. Okay. <laughs> all right, so the guitars in Spite are a little all over the place. Basically, there's two different sections of guitar parts, and in those guitar parts, there are different parts. There's a verse section and then there's the outro section. The verse guitars are affected and chopped etc throughout the majority of the song to create the effects that they do and then the outro guitars are their own separate thing. All right, let us begin. So the first thing you got to do is down tune by a half step. Just generally it's a good idea to do that if you're playing the guitar it sounds good. This song is in G flat major and it's got a little a couple open thingies so you gotta have it down tuned. The way you can do that on like any guitar tuner app or whatever is down tune it to the point where on your guitar, like if you use guitar tune, I use guitar tune, the little number that it says when it wiggles will say minus 11 and that's how you know you've down tuned a semitone. Let's go. Okay, that's Masa Menos in tune. So when the song starts, the first thing you hear is this. It might sound a little weird in the actual song because it's actually two parts layered on top of each other because what I did was I played that one and I also played this one. I just pitched that one down. They're actually both pitched weird because I played it in a different key originally, but that's how you would get that effect. Luckily, they're both the exact same pattern. It's just the shape shifts up by two frets. Okay, so the first, oh, okay, so first we're gonna start with the left hand and show you the shapes, and then I'll show you what the right hand's doing with the finger picking situation. To start, you put your first finger on the third fret A string, your third finger, fifth fret D string, and then your middle finger on the G string, fourth fret. If you haven't seen this shape before, it's an extremely easy shape to do with your fingers comparatively to most guitar chords, and it's so versatile. My favorite thing to do with it is, if you've heard, you've been getting better, that's what this is. It's the same shape, but then when you open the E string up, do so much with it. It's the best. It's so emo. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the right hand. You're basically rolling down from the A string to the D string with your first four fingers. Just roll down the guitar from the A string to the B string. And then the only little wiggly bit is that you hold the B string for a second and then your middle finger and your first finger come back and alternate. So it goes roll and then middle finger, first finger, middle finger. That pattern is the same throughout. So it just... The only thing that changes is where your thumbs hit it. Right now it's starting on the A string. And then it just goes to the E string as the rest of the shapes change. And the rest of your fingers just do the same thing. And then it just repeats. And what your left hand's doing with those other chords is also relatively simple. So the difference between the first chord and the second chord is just a shift of your first finger up from the A string to the E string, which looks like this. And then the next shape requires a little bit of fiddling. You bring your ring finger up to the E string, just directly above it, so it's the E string fifth fret. Your pinky finger to the D string fifth fret. So it looked like that before, and then you just involve your pinky finger. My hand looks like a fucking claw right now. Look at this shit. <laughs> and then on the last cycle, you change the pattern up a little bit. So the second pass sounds like this. So 
what's changing there? Instead of doing the twiddly thing with your middle finger and your first finger, you just let it ring and repeat the first part of the finger picking pattern. So instead of you just go so it's easier. The shape shifts in a similar way as the first time. You bring your ring finger up and your pinky, but then you bring your first finger down to the B string third fret. The first couple times for me, it was kind of hard to get that transition, but once you get the transition of just going to that third shape normally, bringing your first finger down isn't actually that difficult. Feel free to tuck your little thumb boy in there for some comfort. So all together slowly. Now let's look at it closer to full speed with both hands visible. Okay, and then there's a lead part. Oh, I'm getting my pick. And then there's a lead part, and it's really pleasant and tiny. It's a little baby lead part built to be all small, basically just stealing from Astrid idea. It goes like this. And I think I cut that last note in most of the parts, but it is there. The way this works is all on the E string. So your ring finger hits the 10th fret E string and your first finger will hit the eighth fret and you roll off just, and then you slide down to the seventh fret and alternate with your middle finger. And then you slide all the way down to the third fret and just walk up. So that's third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. And then the next one, same beginning. But then instead of walking up to the 5th fret, 7th fret, you go 5th fret, 2nd fret. And then add back into the 3rd. So it goes. Hell yeah. So that's the intro part. Moving on to the outro section with the distortion. Let's turn that bad boy on. Ooh. Let's go. The first two layers are easy. It's just the chords you learn at the beginning, strummed, hard panned left and right, two different takes. And that sounds like this. And the best part about this is the first two layers are just the chords you learn at the beginning with just a slight change at the end. The only thing that changes is instead of holding in this shape at the end of the form where you bring your ring finger and your pinky finger up, you actually lift your ring finger right at the end. So it goes. And then it just repeats. I just want to talk about the strumming pattern real quick. Relatively straightforward. But the fun part is that you're palm muting to, to basically gate the guitar. So it goes. I don't even know how to explain this. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So the idea is that after that first down and up stroke, you do the by, first of all, these fingers are pulled off so they're not actually holding down any notes. And second of all, this hand strums and palm mutes. Or I mean, with me, I'm like muting with my arm, basically. Like just my whole ass arm falls under the string. So it's... So my fingers come up, my arm hits the thing. And that just repeats, so... For the first two, it's open. And for the second two, like quicker ones, there's like a mute. And then at the end, it's just like, blah, 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 and you go crazy. <laughs> that took way too long. And the next part of the outro is, I guess like the second lead is what I'd call it maybe. Basically, it's using octaves, which is a fun way to get a little bit more body in, a, in an otherwise empty lead melody. It sounds like this. <laughs> So essentially what that is, making an octave, so what that looks like is your first finger is on the A string 14th fret and your third finger is on the G string 16th fret. And so that makes an octave. And you're just hitting them quarter notes or whatever they call them. 
after the seventh strum, you swing that octave shape down to the tenth fret and hit kind of like a double tap. So instead of eighth notes, you hit like a sixteenth note. So that sounds like. And then you go back up and hit it three times. And instead of swinging it down and doing the sixteenth notes on the tenth fret, you do it on the twelfth fret. And then same thing, after the you hit three on the twelfth fret, and then swing it back up to the fourteenth fret and do the same sixteenth note. So what we have now is And then you repeat the first part. But then instead of going back up to the 14th fret, you go up to the 12th fret and hit kind of a weird flurry of things. You're basically alternating that down strum slide up 16th note pattern over and over again. So real slow what that sounds like is. And then you just hit a classic one, two, three, sixteenth up strum, down strum on the tenth fret. The whole thing all together. Okay, and the last part is just a classic lead sound thing. Um, and it's a little fiddly for me still, so let's see if I can get it. Um, it sounds like this. Man, that took me so many tries. <laughs> so what I like to do is I use my ring finger, I slide up from the 14th fret to the 15th fret, down to the 13th fret, down to the 12th fret in this rhythm. And then you go back up to the 15th fret, but then you walk down to the G string 14th fret, and then put your first finger on the 12th fret, and kind of do the A1. So. And then you do that again. But instead of going down to the 12th fret, you go up to the 16th fret and then back down to the 12th. So that's. And then it just repeats. So all of that together real slow sounds like this. Outro sequence, my camera's so low on power. Outro sequence, oh my god. Okay, I hope you guys learned something. <laughs> Okay, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested, thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for your support, and that's it. I'm Bryce. Thank you for being part of my life. Fucking like and subscribe. <laughs> Goddamn.